This video looks at the impact of lag compensators on bode diagrams. So we've already done things like what is frequency response, how do I compute it and how do I sketch it quickly and now you'll notice we're focusing on how do I use boat diagrams for feedback loop analysis and design? And the first step in that is looking at how compensators affect boat diagrams. So in particular here, we're looking at lag compensators and what effect do they have on the bode diagram for a loop transfer function? Now, just a reminder of what was covered in the previous video, we said a lag compensator was defined like this, k s plus beta a over s plus a, where beta is between 1 and 10. And the key characteristics were high gain at low frequencies and low gain at high frequencies, with this characteristic phase dip somewhere around the corner frequencies. Now, what we also said is ultimately it's this ratio of high to low gain which is the key thing that we're going to use in design, but we'll get to that later. Now, some more background. If you look a few videos back, we said that when you're doing sketching of bow diagrams, it's useful to be aware of the additive property. So in other words, if you consider G as being the product of G1 and G2, then you'll notice that the phase of G is actually the phase of G1 plus the phase of G2. You just add the phases together. Similarly, when you're looking at the gain bow plot, you'll see that 20 log to the base 10 of the modulus of G can be written as 20 log to the base 10 of modulus G1 plus 20 log to the base 10 of modulus of G2. So in other words, when you multiply compensators together, or systems together, then the corresponding bow plot, you're just adding the two bow plots together. And that's what we're going to use for this video. So just a reminder, finally, about feedback loops or a context. If we've got a feedback loop like the one here, where G, for example, might be your process, and M might be your compensator. And what we're interested in is how is the bow diagram for GM related to the bow diagram for G. So in other words, when I add my lag compensator, what does it do to my bow diagram? Now just to remind you then of the key properties of your lag compensator. In terms of the game plot, the bow, or the lag compensator rather, moves the low frequencies up by k beta and the high frequencies by beta. If we look at the phase plot, you'll see you get the maximum phase dip at the geometric mean of the corner frequencies, and that was om omega equals a root beta. Okay, and this was the actual phase dip, and that was the formula that you have to apply. We also notice that the corner frequencies have the same phase dip, and that was the formula, just in case you want it. Here's an example then. So consider a system G, given here, 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 4, and a lag compensator given as m equals 2 times s plus 5 over s plus 1. And what we want to do is find the bode diagram of gm by first looking at the bode diagram of g, then looking at the bode diagram of m, and seeing how, when I add those two bode diagrams together, what the bode diagram for gm looks like. And the reason for doing this is to see the impact of m on the overall bode diagram. So first thing to note is the lag compensator. It's got a 2 as its k and a ratio of 5 for its beta. So we're going to move low frequencies up by a factor of 10 or 20 decibels. High frequencies will move up by a factor of 2 or 6 decibels. The geometric mean of the corner frequencies, which are 1 and 5, is 2.2, so that's where we'll get the maximum phase dip, and that phase dip will be 42 degrees. And at the corner frequencies, the phase will move down by 33 degrees. So here's the diagram to show what's going on. So first, I'm going to sketch the, um, the lag compensator. You'll see we said at low frequencies you had 20, and at high frequencies you had 6. And you remember the corner frequencies were 1, there's 1 and 5. So there's that green plot was the boat diagram for the lag compensator. And similarly, you'll see the 
green diagram down here we had zero degrees we got down to a phase dip of 42 and then we went up so there's my lag compensator I've now done it in black now the original system had a bow diagram in blue now I'm not going to derive that one I'm just making sure that you can see where it is there was the gain one and here was the phase and the question we want to ask is what is the boat diagram for the compensated system GM and remember what I've got to do is simply add the two together so I add the lag to the G so if I start by looking up here you'll see the lag compensator was 20 decibels and therefore I'm going to shift G up by 20 and if I shift it up by 20 in the low frequency range you get this red line here now in the high frequency range the lag compensator was 6 so you'll see the gap between the two in the high frequency range is just 6 decibels so the key thing mark the key gain at the low frequency range the key shift which is 20 the key shift in the high frequency range which was 6 and then obviously somewhere between the corner frequencies the gap comes together what about the phase characteristic well again you'll notice at low frequencies the phases are pretty much the same because the phase shift is zero at high frequencies the phases are the same because the phase shift is zero but around this phase um, peak which you remember was something like 2.2 radians per second we've got 42 degrees shift downwards so what you've got to do is shift this blue plot down by 42 degrees and that gives you that point there if you go to the corner frequencies which were 1 and 5 there they are 1 and 5 you remember we shifted down by 33 degrees so you can do that you can mark these points by essentially shifting the phase plot down by the requisite value now once you've marked those crosses then you should be able to draw a smooth curve which goes between those crosses and goes back to the blue curve so you can see the impact of the lag compensator on the original system you see what's happening with the gain up here and you see what's happening with the phase down here just by applying the appropriate shifts here's a second example sketch the bow diagram for GM given the bow diagram for G so here's G, slightly more complicated system, 0.2 of S plus 0.1, S plus 0.2, S plus 0.6, and here's my lag compensator, 0.4 into S plus 0.1 over S plus 0.02. So first, we notice that the low frequency gain now is 2. So that's 0.4 times 0.1 over 0.02, and that's 6 decibels. So at low frequencies, I get a 6 decibel shift. At high frequencies, the gain is just 0.4, which is minus 8 decibels, so I get shifted down at high frequencies. What about the phase? Well, the geometric mean of the corner frequencies, and there's the corner frequencies, 0.1 and 0.02, the geometric mean is here, 0.045, and because the ratio here is 5, it moves the phase down by 42 degrees. At the corner frequencies, we're going to move the phase down by 33 degrees so here are the key plots so again I'll do the lag compensator first you'll see at low frequencies we've got 6 decibels and at high frequencies we've got 8 decibels the corner frequencies were 0.1 which is here and 0.02 which is have I got that right 0.1 and 0.02 yes so there's the two corner frequencies and you can see that the lag compensator the gain comes down between those two corner frequencies what about the phase well again you'll see you get the maximum phase dip at the geometric mean which is minus 42 and at the corner frequencies you get minus 33 so what you've got to do next is say okay what will be the boat diagram for my compensated systems so you can see the blue curve is the original G and what I've got to do is shift it up by 6 decibels in the low frequency region and then shift it down by 8 decibels in the high frequency region so I've got 8 here 
and 6 here. So you'll see the red curve is above the blue curve in low frequency range, but below the blue curve in the high frequency range. And the key thing is to get those shifts correct. So a shift 6 on the left-hand side of the graph and a shift of minus 8 on the right-hand side. And what about the phase dip? Well, again, you'll see this is moderately straightforward. We just need to move down by about 44 degrees here at the geometric mean, move down by 33 degrees at the two um, corner frequencies, and now I can draw a smooth curve which goes between these and goes back. So it's very clear what this lag compensator is doing to the phase plot. You'll see that it's basically shifted you down here in the region of the corner frequencies. Now if we look at the exact plots, because my sketching is pretty poor, and what you'll notice is the exact plots are really not that much different from my crude sketch. So the crude sketch gives you a good impression of what is going on. So in conclusion, the video has presented the impact of a lag compensator on a bow diagram for a compensated system. We've demonstrated that a lag compensator can increase the gain at low frequency compared to high frequency, but it reduces the phase in the region of the corner frequencies. And you can easily sketch the impact using just a few simple computations based on the lag parameters. Basically, we know we need to know what the gain equivalent of k and k beta are and calculate the key phase at the corner frequencies and the geometric mean of the corner frequencies. Later videos will show how we can use this more systematically for design.